most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Father, you see every person everywhere listening to the Gospel Hour now. You know every person. You know where they are. You know who they are. You know the condition under which they live, in which they live and work and move. And Father, you know the one thing that stands between every sinner listening to me and salvation. So I commit my soul, spirit, and body to thee, and I beg thee, O God, speak through these lips today the words that you would have spoken and save the souls that are listening now who are unsaved. Reclaim backslidden people, and Father, revive the indifferent, deliver those who fear, and strengthen every believer in the inner man. For Jesus' sake, in his name we ask it, he is worthy, and it is for his sake we pray. Amen. Now, if you have a Bible, I want you to turn with me. Of course, if you are a sinner, you may not have a Bible. You may be riding down the road. You may be in a place of business. You may be in a boat. You may be in a shrimp boat or a fishing boat or you may be in an airplane. I don't know where you are. You could be riding a farm tractor, listening to a transistor with an earphone. I don't know where you are. But if you are listening to me and you're not a child of God, if you'll listen carefully for the next 10 or 12 minutes as I give you the scripture and then explain to you how to be saved, then you'll be saved if you want to be saved. Now, you say, Brother Green, can I be saved? Jesus said, Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Now, that's John 6, 37. All, in other words, anyone, everyone, all, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Come unto me all ye, Matthew eleven twenty eight. I will give you rest. Now then, I read in John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever that takes in you. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now here is the verse that I want you to pay very close attention to. John 3.16 tells us that God loved the world, and whosoever will, let God did not send Jesus to condemn the world, but to save the world. Now listen to this, John 3.18, He that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth on him. But you say, Brother Green, I do believe that Jesus is. I know that is head belief, intellectual belief. But we go deeper than that, and I'll read it to you in Romans 10 in just a few minutes. Now, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now, if you want to know why... A man drinks liquor, takes God's name in vain, murders, lies, cheats, and so on. If you want to know why men do that, they do those sins, they commit those sins because they are not saved, and they are not saved because they are not a believer. So a man, if he dies and wakes up in hell, will do so because he refused to believe on Jesus as his Savior. If you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and by faith receive him in your heart, you'll stop getting drunk, you'll stop killing and lying and cheating and taking God's name in vain. If you'll give your heart to Jesus by faith, he'll give you a new spirit, a new life, and you'll stop doing the things that you do now. You do not stop sinning to get saved. You do not stop sinning to get saved. Sin falls off when you are saved. Sin quits you because there is no fellowship between light and darkness. And when you're born again, you are a child of light. And when you are an unbeliever, you are a child of darkness. Now, if you'll believe on Jesus, he'll save you. 
If you refuse to believe on him, you'll be lost eternally. Now turn to Romans 10. Romans 10. And here is the plan of salvation in the most simple, understandable words I know in all the Bible. Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. The Bible does not say with the hands or with the feet man works or man lives. It says man believes in the heart. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart man believes. With the heart man believes, with the mouth man confesses. You're not saved by works, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Now back to Romans 10 and verse 9 and 10. Now in verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But listen. How shall they then, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So you see, believing precedes calling. You'll never call on God to save you until you believe in your heart that God will save you and that God wants to save you. All right, watch it now. Whosoever shall call shall be saved. How shall they call until they believe? How shall they believe of whom they have not heard? How shall they believe in him, on him? How shall they believe on him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Now listen to me. God calls preachers and God call me. God call me 38 years ago. Yes, 38 years ago. We are now in our 36th year of radio, daily radio ministry. But 38 years ago, God put me in the ministry back in a little broom sage field on the backside of my daddy's farm. God put me in the ministry at the age of 19. Between the age of 19 and age of 19 and 20 years, I was a little under 20 years old when God put me in the ministry. And I've been preaching the same gospel ever since. Now, what I'm saying to you is this. God called me to preach, and I'm preaching to you today. I'm telling you today. I've been telling you from the book of Revelation that Jesus is coming. And he's coming, we do not know when, but he's coming. I've told you that the Antichrist will come. The tribulation will come. The mark of the beast will come. Men will chew their tongues and beg God to let them die. And they can't die. Blood will run to the horse's bridles. I've told you about the demon monstrosities. I've told you about the lake of fire. I've told you about the terrible, terrible, terrible judgments that God will pour out upon this earth. And then I told you about the new heaven, the new earth, and the pearly white city and the paradise of God, the river of life, the tree of life, and the street of transparent gold. Now listen to me, beloved. I preach the gospel to you. Whosoever shall call shall be saved. How shall they call until they believe? How shall they believe until they hear? How shall they hear without a preacher? Now here's the plan. I have preached to you the word of God. I have given to you the word of God. I've given you the word day by day. I've given you the word. I have told you over and over that if you would believe on Jesus, trust in Jesus, accept Jesus, he'll save you. I've told you that over and over and over again. All right? You've heard it. Now, do you believe it? If you do, then receive Jesus by faith. Now listen to verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The only place that you can find a saving faith. Now why do I say saving faith? Because faith brings grace that saves. And you can't separate the two actually in the plan of salvation. Because if you do not exercise faith, you cannot possess grace. And if you exercise faith, then grace automatically comes into your heart and life. Now listen. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now that leads me back to the words of Jesus in John 5 24. Verily, verily I send you he that heareth my word. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life. Now if you hear the word of God 
Hear the word of God. Believe the word of God. You have passed from death unto life. The word of God brings faith. Faith brings grace. Grace brings salvation. Salvation delivers from hell. And the only way to be delivered from hell is to hear the word of God. Believe it, receive it, and put your faith and trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Now you turn to Ephesians 2. I would never think of giving a message on salvation and not use Ephesians 2 and verses 8 and 9 and part of verse 10. For by grace are ye saved. For by grace are ye saved. Through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Salvation is God's gift to a hell-deserving sinner. And the only way to get a gift is to receive it from the giver. You must have a gift to give. You must be willing to give that gift. And there must be uh, a receiver to complete the giving. If I, do, if I do not have anyone to give a gift, it matters not how many gifts I may have. If there is no one to receive, then my gift will never become a gift because it will always be mine. Now, God loved us and God gave Jesus to die on the cross. And if you will believe on Jesus and receive God's gift then God will save you because salvation is the gift of God. You can't earn a gift. You cannot work for a gift. You must receive the gift. If I, and of course I live by faith and have for 38 years, I live by faith and I trust God to feed and clothe me and my family. And people send me gifts. People give to me gifts. When I was in revival meetings, many times a person would come and shake hands with me and they would give me an offering, a piece of money or a check. And they said, Brother Green, this is for you. And I would receive it. Now listen, the person wanted to give me a gift. The person had a piece of money. A dollar bill, a five dollar bill, a ten dollar bill, a hundred dollar bill. Makes no difference the size of the bill. If it's a dollar bill or a hundred dollar bill. If the person desires to give me the gift, whatever it may be, then the person wants to give it. He has it to give and I receive it. And so that completes the gift. Now, God does not have any pleasure in the death of the wicked. God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. It is not God's will that any perish, but that all repent. And so God loved us and God had, God had what it took and what sin demanded to pay the debt. God had a priceless gift. His only begotten son, the lamb, without spot or blemish. And God willingly gave his only begotten son. And the son willingly came and laid his life down, gave his life on Calvary. Now, it's up to you to receive Jesus. He came, he suffered, he bled, he died, he was buried, he rose again, he ascended, and it's up to you to receive him. Now listen, for by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works. We are his workmanship, created in Christ now, God does the borning, God does the creating, God does the saving, God does the redeeming. All you can do is believe the word and receive the gift of God. That's all you can do. Now, hear me carefully and hear me well. This is the verse the minister used the night God saved me. Romans six twenty three. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, if you're serving sin, if you're living in sin, you'll be paid off throughout eternity in hell. You say, I don't believe in hell. There is one, and you can't prove there isn't. There is a hell, and you can't prove there isn't. Whether you believe it or not, the Bible tells us there is. And if you could hear some of the sinners die that I have witnessed their death, you'd believe in hell. There is a hell. If you don't believe it now, ten seconds, five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second, a half a second after you're dead, you'll believe in hell. And you'll wish throughout eternity that you had believed before you died. God pity you. It's your privilege it is your privilege not to believe 
There is a hell, but God pity you if you believe that. I beg you now to renounce your unbelief and exercise faith in God. There is a hell and there is a heaven. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, if you want to stay out of hell and go to heaven, then here's the way to do it, and the only way. By God's grace, through faith, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Now, when you say in your heart, I believe that Jesus died for my sins, I believe he rose from the dead, and I believe he lives today. And then you look up, you don't necessarily look up, look down, look straight out, look up, look right, look left. Just look in your heart, in your heart. It matters not the way your eyes look or the position of your body. Get on your knees if you can, but if you can't, stand up, walk. It doesn't matter just so long as you believe in your heart. It's not imperative that you get on your knees to be saved. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful display of humility to fall down upon your knees and call on God. But that is not imperative. I ask you now, do you believe that Jesus died for you? Do you believe he will save you? Do you believe he's able to save you? Do you want to stay out of hell? Do you want to go to heaven? All right. Pray this prayer from your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm lost. Dear Lord Jesus, I want to be saved. Forgive my sins. Wash them away in your blood. And save me, Jesus. Come into my heart, Jesus. And save my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. If you'll pray those words from your heart and mean them, I guarantee you on the grounds of the Word of God, God will save you, and you'll know it. Kind Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, the Lamb of God, through the shed blood of the Lamb, I beg thee for every soul that is calling now. Save, O oh God, save every soul that is under conviction. Deepen conviction, draw mightily, and save many hundreds now. Across America, in Canada, the islands, Mexico, wherever, sinners are under conviction, save them. Thank you, Father, thank you, Father, thank you, Father, for victory through the blood. Thank you for every soul that is surrendering to Jesus now in his precious Saving name, amen.